All right, guys, 6R80. I have this drum, and uh, this was a weird one. This one came in with a uh, shift solenoid E code, and uh, I thought I had snapshot the, the trouble code on the scan tool, but uh, apparently I didn't, or somehow I, I didn't, it didn't happen. Uh, I don't have the trouble code number with me, but we drove it. It was working perfect. So I said, okay, well, let's replace the shift solenoid E. And the shift solenoid E is the, uh, the on-off solenoid, the only on-off solenoid on, on a 6R80. All right, so dropped the valve body, uh, got a new solenoid from Ford, and uh, installed the solenoid. The pan was completely, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of the transmission disassembled. I mean, I would disassemble it afterwards, and this is what I found. Uh, so it came with a shift solenoid E code, drove perfect cold, we dropped the valve body, put a solenoid in it, a shift solenoid E, uh, put the valve body back on, you know, do the quick learns and all, uh, all the uh, uh, normal stuff that you do after you get done with the unit. Send somebody to go drive it, uh, and they drove it, came back, yeah, it was working all right, never did anything. Well, uh... That was one one of the guys drove it then another guy drove it i'm i'm, I'm on the bench all, all the time i'm building all the time and uh, they go and test drive it so the service driver goes drive it i'll say all right let's let's drive it and see uh uh if it's if it's all right because he never did anything to us and uh so he goes drives it and everything was working fine but sometimes the way we test drive vehicles is different than anybody else and we put him under a load and it's a six-speed transmission. You go through the gears, and uh, you start uh, playing with the accelerator pedal. You know, put it under a little bit of load without downshifting, and then put it under a load to make a downshift and do all kinds of crazy shifting patterns, right? And uh, that's when we found that that's how we got to stress the problem. And the hotter it got, the worse it got. And it got to a point where it was shifting from first to fourth it would skip on the scan tool i was looking at the scan tool it will skip fifth gear and on the range sensor it would say uh park neutral it would jump to park neutral and then it would go to sixth gear and you would downshift normal all the way to uh to first gear but what i noticed as well that about two or three times because i mean eventually i had to go drive it you know with the scan tool or have a driver and then me look at data because we couldn't get it to do anything and then when the it was acting up it was acting up very very weird and i was trying to catch and see what gears were were the ones affecting and it did like a double bump on second gear and also it did uh, some weird stuff going into fifth and then all of a sudden i noticed that it would skip fifth gear every time now the way we were driving it we did uh, we did not get it to get the uh shift solenoid e code any, any longer but i got incorrect gear ratio in fifth gear i said okay we're getting somewhere and i said all right well let's drop the pan and uh let's inspect it because we we managed to get make it do something and i actually felt it slip a few times so uh uh long story short we dropped the pan the fluid perfect i mean it got a little bit overheated but it was still cherry red i mean we had to drive it at least two hours to make it do something and whenever the customer tells you that there's something going on i mean you better believe it and if you have a trouble code uh and then you drive it and then there's nothing going on uh i mean you have to drive it in different matters you know manner of driving like the way we did at the end when we found out what the problem was okay i'm gonna air check this drum i took it apart you know to inspect it and everything and i, I put it back together these are the new ceiling rings from from the uh, overhaul this transmission was built about a year ago so these ceiling rings were the new from the overhaul kit and uh i marked it crap now this just happened this uh, this just happened but this transmission was built about a year ago and uh, with the condition of the fluid and the condition of the unit inside, I mean, you thought maybe a computer problem or something like that. But 
the good thing is that we got it to do something we pulled it out i'm going to show you some pictures of the transmission pulled out uh on the bench you know spread out on the bench and uh i almost missed it you know because I, I was looking for everything and i was looking at everything and you know uh when it's cold right now it's cold but i'm going to put a lot of pressure to it uh it would hide it would hide the problem so let's air check it uh it has a little bit of fluid in there but how can i make it zoom in let's see let me zoom in all right i'm gonna go right here we're gonna look at this area right here i'm gonna have it sideways like that and i need some light let me see let me turn some light light on all right I got to plug both holes. No, you, you, you can't see it. You can't see it, but there is a crack right here. And I can feel it with my finger now. I'm going to go this way. Right at this edge, right here. Let me try to position it to where you guys can see it. It's blowing back at me. Maybe if I put a little bit, you see how you hold the pressure? I'm gonna put a little bit of fluid. This is where the frictions drain. I'm gonna put a little bit of fluid at the edge, and then I'm gonna tear this drum apart, and I'm gonna show you what's going on. Okay, let's see. Fluid is draining. Let me get a better shot right here. Kind of get you guys closer. Are you checking? There we go, you see that? Now you can see it. Crack drum, and it holds the pressure. I mean, if you do it like this, you might say, all right, I mean, it's good. But actually, you can actually see the shaft move. Look at this. Let me zoom out a little bit, because whenever I, I release the pressure, you're gonna see the shaft move back and forth. Watch this. So there's a big, big crack on that drum. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys on pause and I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well, before I do that, let's check this out. This is what throws you off sometimes. So you tear it apart. Now these are the clutches that were there. I replaced the drum, I put new clutches and ceiling, uh, uh, ceiling rings and, uh, and uh, O-rings, look at this. And I said, I gotta save this. I gotta show you guys this. Look at this. You would you would think that there was nothing wrong with this thing. And see how the pressure holds holds the frictions? Well, that's cold. When it gets hot, the metal expands and it opens up more. And I'm surprised that they're not burned. I mean, maybe you can see a little bit of discoloration, but it's not burned. So sometimes you have to be very very careful. I'm gonna take the snap ring off, but I'm gonna have to take this to the foot press. I'll take the snap ring off and I'm gonna take the pistons out. Hold that thought. Be right back. All right, so I got the snap ring off. This is the uh, balance piston. Return spring. And yeah, it's pretty clean because I cleaned the drum, you know, to uh, for inspection. Now I need to blow some air a little bit. Now, it is very important that you put stator bushings on this thing. This one only takes one stator bushing, but the 6R75 have a bushing up here as well. This bushing right here seals the, uh, the, the circuit. This ceiling, the bottom ceiling ring and the rear stator bushing, these are what seals the applied circuit for the E-clutch for the e or the 456 or overdrive. This is overdrive on on GM is four five six. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same concept. And on the BMWs, this this is uh, the E clutch. So that's the ply feet feet hole. 
the ceiling ring, I mean the bushing, it seals the ply circuit on the on the on the four five six or the overdrives. Put a little bit of air. As you can see, I mean there's nothing wrong with the oil rings. And you can actually see the crack better on this side. I think I'm gonna have to turn this light off a little bit. Or no, maybe turn it on. Let it out of focus or whatever. But the crack, it's right here. That's too bright, this thing's too bright. I think you can probably see it. I'm gonna indirectly shine some light. Right there. So I'm holding my flashlight with my right hand, but I cannot point to you, but you can see the crack. It's more visible through the inside of the drum. So I'm gonna show you. The crack is right here. Issues with fifth gear. This actually comes on in 4th, 5th, and 6th. For some reason, 4th was good. In 5th, uh, I need to uh, recheck again the uh, apply schedule. This is probably uh, on its own. I know it uses the 2-6, uh, the 4-5-6 uh, and the 2-6 for 6th gear. So 6th gear was good. On 4th gear, uh, you, use, uh, you use this. And I can't remember if it's the A clutch. Uh, I got to look at the, uh, the shift scheduling. Anyways, uh, but the problem is right here. Now I'm going to show you the trouble codes. And I'm going to show you uh, an image, uh, some pictures that I took off, off the transmission. These are the trouble codes that came out of it. The pan off the, of this transmission and the torque converter, the blue one. Don't bother the pan on the right. I had another 6R80 on the other bench. The pan on the left, that's the pan on this one. Here's an image of the crack. On the on the 456 uh, sideways like that, you can see a little bit of brown. There's another image of the crack. A close-up of the crack. And thank you for watching.